it's becoming increasingly easier to snap photos anytime, anywhere, and as a result, you're taking pictures of not only major moments in your life, like a wedding or a birthday, but also all the little moments, silly moments of you and your friends goofing off, or just cute pictures of your dog. With a massive collection of personal photos, it's becoming harder and harder to find that one photo when you need it. One obvious solution is for the user to manually tag and organize all of the photos in their collection. But who has the time for that? So how can a photo management app, Google Photos, come to your aid? We want our users to be able to take all their photos, put them into Google Photos, and without any tagging or organizing or putting them into folders, be able to search for all of them uh, in a kind of automagical way. A big challenge, though, when trying to solve this problem is how do you provide all the search results that are needed uh, when the users don't provide you with any information except the photos themselves? Now let's imagine you want to create a photo album of all your past trips to the beach. Assuming your photos are not organized or labeled in any meaningful way, Way, how can we program a computer to help you find the photos you're looking for? To try to solve this problem, we first need to understand how a photo is represented. From a computer's perspective, a photo is simply a collection of pixels, a blend of red, green, and blue, where each photo is usually a collection of millions of such pixels. Computers can use these pixels to extract additional data and information about the photos, which we call labels. Computational thinking is important to our work because it allows us to take this large problem of organizing world photos and simplify it, split it into smaller problems, and then tackle each problem at a time. One approach to finding your beach photos would be for a computer to automatically go through all your photos and detect every possible object in them. And then we would return all the photos that contain objects that can be found on the beach, such as sand, waves, water, sun, palm tree, seagull, and so on. But it will take a really long time to run such an algorithm for every object on every photo that you ever took. And this algorithm might not even find all the photos that you took at the beach. Algorithms are a set of instructions that one can give to computers to automate processes that would otherwise be difficult or challenging for us to perform manually. A more efficient or faster algorithm may want to look for location information in the photo. This location information can come from GPS devices on cameras, smartphones, tablets. If that location is close to a beach, the algorithm will choose to put those photos in the search results. Additionally, the algorithms may want to take a look at the pixels themselves to figure out whether there are any objects in the scene that are associated to a beach, such as sand or water. But what about the photos that you took at the beach that don't look like the beach and don't have any location information, such as photos of you in the water or photos of food in the restaurant near the beach? To solve this, our algorithms could look at the date and return the photos that were taken around the same time. Once our algorithms find all the beach photos, they can further highlight the ones that are more relevant to you. And in order to be able to search through all the photos in the world today, using algorithms is key. Automation of algorithms is key because of the sheer volume of photos. Any manual process would be way too time intensive. When building algorithms, you have to think about different trade-offs, such as speed versus accuracy. And often there might not be just one solution. In the real world, problems are not always clear and well-defined. There are multiple approaches to solving any one problem. As a result, you should consider the various trade-offs and pick the best solution that meets your goals.